Hello friends, today I am going to teach you about ASOM, Acute Separative Otitis Media. It is a very huge topic and also one of the topics in which we get confused easily. So Acute Separative Otitis Media is the acute inflammation of the middle ear cleft. The middle ear cleft includes the eustachian tube, the tympanic cavity, the attic, aditus, antrum and the mastoid arcells. So, I'll point out the structures one by one. So, this is the eustachian tube and this is the middle ear cavity and uh, these are the ossicles. So, above the ossicles, there is a space which is called the attic. In this picture, you can see that the attic is connected to the mastoid antrum through a passageway. That passageway is called the aditus. So, for now, we have seen the eustachian tube, middle ear cavity, Attic, aditus, and mastoid antrum. Beyond the mastoid antrum, there are some mastoid arcells. As you can see in this picture, these are the mastoid arcells. So, inflammation in all of these areas is called as acute separative otitis media. Now, how does this happen? What is the source from which this middle ear gets infected? The most common cause of acute separative otitis media is pharyngitis. But pharyngitis is in the throat and ASOM is in the middle ear. How are these both related? They are related to the eustachian tube. Eustachian tube connects the middle ear and the throat. So any infection of the pharyngitis that will be viral will get superimposed by streptococcus pneumoniae which is a bacterial infection and then it spreads to the middle ear cavity through the eustachian tube. So eustachian tube is the most common route of spread of the infection but there are also other routes like it can happen through the external ear if there is a trauma and the eardrum is perforated then the infections can spread through the external ear and into the middle ear directly or if there is already an existing infection in the body then through the blood the infections can spread to the middle ear through the blood supply of the middle ear the infection will spread there so these are the most common route of spread of infection and the most common organism is streptococcus pneumoniae also called as pneumococcus now, I will tell you about the five stages of acute separative otitis media. The first one is the stage of tubal occlusion. So, when the infection spreads to the eustachian tube, what happens to the eustachian tube? In the eustachian tube, there will be inflammation. Because of the inflammation, there will be edema. So, the eustachian tube linings become edematous. Like this, the eustachian tube gets blocked. If the eustachian tube gets blocked, the middle ear cavity then becomes a closed cavity. So it is only communicating with the mastoid now. It's not communicating with the throat anymore. So what happens is the air cells outside the ear, like the air cells over here is more. So there are more number of air cells outside and there are less number of air cells inside. So the pressure outside becomes more than the pressure inside. Between a high pressure and a low pressure, the tympanic membrane is there. So the tympanic membrane becomes slightly retracted. So the tympanic membrane becomes slightly retracted like this. Right? So going away from the topic, the signs of tympanic membrane retraction. Do you know how to identify them? So these are the signs. The, so the handle of malleus will become more horizontal. And the lateral process of malleus becomes more prominent. The anterior and posterior malleolar folds show sickling and the cone of light gets distorted. So this is a picture in which the tympanic membrane is retracted. So uh, this is what happens in the first stage that is the stage of tubal occlusion. Because of the tubal occlusion, uh, because of the eustachian tube getting blocked, the air inside has less pressure and the air outside has more pressure. Because of that, the eustachian tube becomes retracted. Now the patient will have slight pain and a slight hearing loss. Usually in this stage, the patient will not go to hospital. The next is the stage of pre-separation. During the stage of pre-separation, the infection spreads above. So until now, the infection was present in the eustachian tube. Now the infection has spread above to the middle ear cavity lining. So the infection went from here to here. So that means this area is also affected now. So what happens now is the middle ear becomes, uh, they also show signs of inflammation. They become edematous and they become hyperemic. And also the middle ear cavity secretes fluid inside. So the cavity becomes hyperemic and edematous and they start secreting fluid.
so in the stage of pre-separation as the fluid increases uh, more and more fluid is secreted the tympanic membrane is not able to hold the pressure anymore and it starts bulging out the retracted tympanic membrane starts bulging out and the patient will have very severe earache and he or she may also have fever now how will we know that uh, the patient will come to the hospital with fever earache and hearing loss how will we know that this is a um, asom so one important sign is the cartwheel sign so uh, the middle ear lining becomes edematous and hyperemic i have mentioned before that the middle ear lining has become edematous and hyperemic so the tympanic membrane is also a part of the middle ear lining this is the middle ear the tympanic membrane also forms a part so the tympanic membrane is also hyperemic so because of this the tympanic membrane becomes reddish so that is the cartwheel sign as you can see in this picture in this year there is a asom and uh, this is the cartwheel sign next going to the stage of suppuration during the stage of separation more and more and more fluid gets produced in the middle ear cavity and the tympanic membrane is not able to hold the pressure anymore so one more communication is the mastoid cavity so you can if you say if you take a ct or a x ray of mastoid a ct temporal bone or x ray of mastoid you will see that there are clouding in the mastoid as well because the pus has gone there also so what happens is the tympanic membrane cannot hold the pressure anymore and the tympanic membrane ruptures during this period the patient will have very severe earache very high grade fever and the patient may also have vomitings and convulsions and during this stage the patient may either stay at home or the patient may come to hospital if the patient stays at home then the pressure will increase and the tympanic membrane will rupture and uh, all the fluid will drain out there will be a decrease in the earache decrease in the fever and the patient will feel more relieved also the um, hearing will uh, gradually return back to normal and uh, the tympanic membrane uh, the, there initially there will be loss of landmarks in the tympanic membrane which will be returned back to the normal state so this is what happens if the patient doesn't come to the hospital if the patient comes to the hospital then we can do a meringotomy which is a op procedure so in the op we will use a meringotome this is the meringotome as you can see uh, we will use a meringotome to make a incision on the tympanic membrane on the posterior inferior aspect so on the posterior inferior aspect we will make a curvy linear incision so that all the pus will come out when we do this the pus will come out in pulsations so this is also called as pulsatile otorrhea or the lighthouse sign so what's the difference between when the patient stays at home and when the patient comes to hospital so when the patient stays at home um, he has more risks of complications but when the patient comes to the uh, hospital then we make a clear incision which is more likely to heal properly without any complications so then i already told you about the stage of resolution after the rupture everything will go back to normal the fever will come down the earache will go down the hearing will become better and the patient will feel more relieved that is the stage of resolution then going to the stage of complication in case the patient um, does not heal within 3 months of the rupture if the tympanic membrane usually the tympanic membrane should heal by itself within 3 months of the rupture if the tympanic membrane has not healed yet after 3 months also then they go to stage of complication where they can develop mastoiditis because the infection spread to the mastoid infection may also spread to the temporal bone pterocytis or it can spread to the brain causing brain abscesses it can cause meningitis thrombophlebitis facial paralysis because it put pressure on the facial nerve so all these are the complications that can happen because of asom now how do we treat this condition so first we know it's a infection so we give antibacterial therapy that is most commonly amoxicillin plus clavulinate for 10 days minimum if the patient is allergic to penicillin you can give cotrimoxazole or erythromycin also then you give decongestants to relieve all the pus so you can give oxymetazolin xylometazolin etc as a nasal drop or you can give systemic uh, decongestants like pseudoephedrine right then you have, you know that the patient has fever and pain also ear pain so then you give analgesics like paracetamol which will bring down fever and act as analgesic also and to make the ear dry you give ear, you do ear toileting 
you make the ear dry and then uh, meringotomy is the procedure we do when the rupture of the tympanic membrane is imminent so that is about the acute separative otitis media thank you for listening to me if you found the video useful please like share subscribe and comment on it thank you